right there. I remember there's a there's a really good friend of mine in Chicago, Viresh Bhatia. Viresh is this kind of maverick kind of computer geek, and uh, he had done a lot of different kind of software tools and different. He was like 19 or 20 years old, and he was going to this software tools trade show to show off all his different tools he had built. Like you know, he was trying to do like Google Maps 25 years ago. You know, the computing couldn't handle it 30 years ago. Like it was going to fail. You know, so but but he had all these ideas about different things he wanted to do. So he's making kind of the background for his booth, and he had these seven tools he wanted to talk about. So it was like four on one side, four bullets, and then three on the other side. It wasn't matching. So he wanted like eight bullets instead of seven bullets, and so he comes up with a fictional product which doesn't exist. And he makes that the eighth bullet, okay? And then two days in the trade show, no one has any interest in any of his bullets, okay? This one guy who's got a booth across the aisle from him has spent two days looking at those eight bullets, okay? And after two days, just before he's like wrapping up, he comes across the aisle to talk to him. He says, "I want to, I want that eighth bullet product, okay?" So Viresh said, "Okay, I can get it to you in about a six weeks, or like you know, I can I can do it. Sure." It turns out the eighth bullet became Install Shield. Okay, the tool we all use to install anything on Windows, right? So Viresh basically created Install Shield because the guy across the aisle came to him and says, "I need that." install tool to install my software so that's what i want and so he goes back he creates install shield for this one customer and then he realizes no one has any interest in any other nonsense he's working on and then he goes all in on install shield and viresh is now you know walked off into the sunset doing just great doing just fine i think he was He was retired in his 30s, part of computer folklore. You know, great, worked out great. So I think the the really important thing is that your customer will always tell you. They'll tell you what you need to do. What happens with most of us is we are too headstrong to listen. You you have to. Sometimes it'll just be a passing remark. You know, because they're not going to tell you, listen, build this or do this. They'll say, "Oh, I wish I had this," or something like that will come up in conversation. You know, one thing that as content creators, as creators, that we run into is our life is based off of the things that we create. But one of the challenges we often run into is how do we make money out of the things that we create? Because a lot of times, our work is a privilege, right? If you make films, if you make movies, it's not. work you know like we're not saving lives it's not a necessity it's not like people wake up every day and they're like i need a movie in my life or i need a short film or i need this but so often i've started to realize being a creative means you're an entrepreneur you're constantly building something that somebody might need you know you can make a short film that someone can watch or on their train ride to work if it's a 5 minute train ride if it's a 30 minute train ride you can have a podcast that people listen to and get information out of it but one of the challenges that we have is when we're starting out we are constantly thinking of what can i do that will guarantee success that will help me have the money to be able to experiment until i find the things that people want part of the reason of making this video is for us to have an understanding that people tell us what they want people tell us what they need and we see this through our analytics like here on youtube you can see which of your videos are performing better than the ones that are not the ones that you want you know a lot of times like the ones that you are passionate about the ones that you want to create don't really get the traction and the ones that you just make to make that people want to see get traction and i think the thing that we have to do is to see okay how can i fit what i want to make with what what people want to watch based of what i'm creating and how people are resonating so looking at your analytics is something that's very critical i've seen a lot of people take a dig at marvel and disney for like hey why do they do this as a disney formula listen if you are making a billion dollars out of 
a hundred million investment. You have to do that over and 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 over again because it means that formula, that system that you have is working. There's a lot of people who make movies that do not go anywhere, that tank, that do not make money. And those movies do not get made again because a lot of times is being creatives, we get so bogged down into it has to be original. It has to be my idea. We ha- we have to make it work, but we don't have to. We have to understand the business side of things. And being on platforms such as YouTube, the main goal, you know, a lot of times we try to hack the algorithm. We try to understand the algorithm. But I think that more than trying to hack the algorithm, the goal is to understand our audiences, is to understand who's watching these videos that we make and what they want to see. How much value can you add? And you have to be willing to let go of any thoughts that you had prior to doing it. 